Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's showtime. The Chariot Room is proud to present the first lady of comedy, that knockers up gal, Miss Rusty One. I can't tell you how to launch a missile rocket. Oh, why oxygen is in the atmosphere. But the way to make your mark in those moments after dark, that's why Rusty is here. I can't tell you how to climb up Mount Olympus or how to play the saxophone by ear, but to buy the proper cup so you can keep your knockers up. That's why Rusty is here. Now the class will come to order. Everybody pull up a chair. It's time you learned a little something. I see a hell of a lot of boobies out there. I can't tell you how to marinate a herring or make rabbit out of cheddar cheese and beer. But the right way to cavort at your favorite indoor sport. That's why Rusty is here. Is that why you're here, dear, to learn about sex? Is that why you're here, sir? Live it up, what do you got to lose? Connie Francis likes to sing of teenage romance. Sophie Tucker brings you sentiment and corn. But to sing about the sack and the mattress at your back, that's why Rusty was born. Lady Bird can tell you all about the White House. Mickey Mantle knows how baseball should be played. But to keep you on your toes when your fella comes and goes. That's why Rusty was made and made and made and made and made. I can see that all my students are assembled. If there's any questions, I've a willing ear. If you want to tame your guy or find another way to fly, don't be afraid to ask me, dear, cause that's why Rusty, that's why Rusty, that's why Rusty is here. Hi everybody! Hello! It I, has been a little while. It's no, it hasn't. Nothing, nothing. No time has passed. Nothing has changed. Nothing is different. I'm fine. Everything's normal. I feel like we're in 1984. We're staring directly at it. No, um, I, I got a haircut. That's true. That's the thing that happened. My hair is getting longer, and I'm growing a beard again. Yeah, and I'm trying to do both of those things um, because. I'm not super fond of having a short haircut. This is weird. Also, I don't think my hair knows how to be short, which is why it's popping up in places and it's a little cowlicky, so I'm sorry. Um, if this were a Thursday, it would be a throwback. Uh, yeah. I've been running the Twitter account, so you'll have noticed if you follow us on Twitter that I put a lot of things like that up there. <laughs> because that's what people do. That's what people do. I... Uh, um, this is going to be terrible to admit, I don't even follow our own Twitter account. Then again, I'm not really on Twitter, yeah. which is why Kevin is handling the Twitter account. I That's why I don't really tweet. like, I don't know how to tweet. There's like seven people who follow us. <laughs> <laughs> I spend more time reaching out to other people just trying yeah. to like communicate with other shows and things just to see what's going I on. I just don't know how to like social media in the same way. Like, like I have my Tumblr and I have um, Facebook, but like my Tumblr is... is I don't know. It's I don't know. I, I put like one post up a day, and the whole point is that like you're supposed to be constantly, constantly in like, touch. And it's like I check and see what's going on, but I don't feel that need to just keep throwing stuff out there and, yeah. and keep trying to dynamically create content. But maybe that's something we need to start doing. Um, uh, that's a great non segue into our album for this week. Yeah, Rusty Warren's Sex Exponent. 
it's 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 fun. It, it's it's a bit goofy. Um, uh, I, I think the one thing we we yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on this that it's better when she's just like off the cuff making commentary and sort of like talking back and forth with the audience where it kind of works a little bit better. Her song parodies are, at least they're basic. I enjoy them at least a little bit more than Alan Sherman because on some level you're just like, well, I, I guess his are technically more clever, but she's just saying like boobies a lot. Yeah, well, let's um, let's start back at the beginning. Rusty Warren. <laughs> yeah, we should explain who she is. We'll, we'll start there. Rusty Warren, uh, born in New York uh, in the early 1930s, either 30 or 31. She's still alive, so she's 85 now. Uh, she was trained at the New England School of Music, or the Conservancy, um, was actually uh, a teacher there for a short time um, um, in the piano. And on top of that, she started performing in clubs and lounges, uh, but didn't start to really find herself until the 1950s, mid-1950s, doing her act in Phoenix and Las Vegas, uh, being associated with, at that time, the female presence of uh, sexual comedy and like Dan was saying a lot of what she does is very uh, boobies it's like it's just it's just talking making a lot of funny corny jokes and and then she also does these parodies yeah well uh, you, you know and you were saying initially you were sort of like like kind of like eh, about this because it was like the kind of humor that like a 13 year old boy would come up with yeah it just kind of comes off like somebody who's who's talking in a school bathroom being like oh did you see your movie <laughs> but but at the same time like there's something refreshing about it because she's not a 13 year old boy yes and and w this this was like mid 60s and she'd been doing it since the late 50s um, her first album um yeah uh i think what was it songs for sinners songs for sinners 1959 and she produced 15 albums total, pretty much one every year yeah. after that. I, I'm actually kind of kicking myself because the store that I got this from, again, uh, Alta Vista Art and Antiques in, in Alta Vista, Virginia. Um, thank you guys. They had a bunch of rust. They had a bunch of rusty worn records. It's just I felt like I was already buying so many for myself that it was just kind of like, mm, am I being a bit of, you know, I just didn't want to overspend, but. They were so cheap that it's just like, I don't know, I could have spent like three bucks a pop, like, getting these things. Yeah. But Maybe I mean, it's... A bit more. But I mean, I, again, you're not really knowing what you were getting into when you were buying That's true. This. That's true. And I bought this one because just aesthetically, I mean, I, I really love the design of this. I mean, it's a very like, 60s image. It's, it's a very 60s image, but I just like how simple it looks. Um... I would say it's also one of the only albums she did that where she didn't actually put a picture of herself, of herself on it. Um... Although I, I love the, 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 the picture, she's like blonde and she, her hair is all like done up and it's like all the covers are like very classy and it's just like, this is a woman like, you know, making like lots of boob jokes. And it's probably done that way on purpose that like right. she has this certain style about her and she's also very well trained. Yeah. Like she has a background. She, she, she's essentially, she's like a dirty class act. It's just yeah. like, yeah, you know, she, she's, she's a real musician. Um, her, her vocals are, are like, imperfect in a way that's, like, good, because they're kind of, like, brassy and, like... It's got a very New Yorker rough. tone yeah, to it. Yeah. No, no, but, but that's the thing, is is I think... I, I think what works about her kind of, like, silly style and the, like, over-the-topness of it is the fact that she's basically making few people feel comfortable about talking about stuff that, like... Like, she, she's not saying anything especially dirty. She's just... I mean, she's just saying it. Yeah, like, like I don't even think she says the word penis. She just refers to like, down there da, or da, small da, problems. Small. small pro oh, uh, what, what was the joke? Uh, uh, you have a small problem. I think we can help you. That. No, 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 no. Something along those lines. No, well. I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to cut that one out and put it in. But, but it's she, she's not saying anything like explicit. Uh, she says getting it a lot uh, in reference to sex. Um, but it's it's just a lot of it's it's a lot of fun, and I really think that on some level we all do need to move past like juvenile things about sex. But it's just like I don't know. It's it's kind of important to like. Well, I think in terms of yeah. like you're saying about juvenile nature and sex and everything is that you know we're looking at this through the prism of the modern age, where talking about sex is very much a. You know, be we call it juvenile for that exact reason. Yeah. And at this time period, 
Uh, we've done a number of albums yeah. about sexual topics and taboos uh, from the 50s and 60s. Um, this is the first one, I think, that was written by a woman, performed by a woman. It was, it was her from start to finish. Not yeah. like Girlesque, right back over here, which was written by a man and basically done the whole production. Just and and by performed a by a woman who was made invisible by the... Exactly. Yeah. This, is, this is a female perspective from start to finish. And it, it comes off as juvenile, I think, because at the same time, that was the only way to get started with it. That yeah. it's it's it was a taboo at the time, and especially coming from a woman. And yeah. she has references in there about oh, you know, if you're with a guy, don't giggle at him, or you well, know, men yeah. cause all these problems, but you know, women can solve them in a very particular way. So it it, it has this sense about it that it's it's a it sounds juvenile, but in in 1959 through you know the early yeah. 70s, this was setting a style up. This was setting comedy yeah. for, for the next 50 years. Well, you know, left there maybe a few people here that figure they ain't getting their chair or something. <laughs> That's all right, are you a married fella? You're right, and you're married, and you're happy, and you're getting it. Isn't it wonderful to get married and know that any time you want it, you can have it by just give a little nudge and there it is. Waiting, madly, passionately panting for your divine embrace, oh great white father. <laughs> what happens in your house? The kids yell about they want to drink a water. <laughs> you mean you're not getting how many children do you have? Oh, you mean you only did it twice and then they keep bugging you? looks like a mad, passionate person. I just sort of looked at him, I picked on him and said, there's a guy that's getting it any time he wants to get it. And I start talking to him about getting it. He says, no, I don't get it because the kids keep hollering with the glasses of water and drives me out of my mind. I can't get no sex at home. I have to go outside. <gasps> you didn't mean with another woman. You meant outside in the backyard, didn't you, sir? Why not? Why not do it in the backyard? You're in sunny California, it's beautiful out here. If you like to do it in the backyard, go ahead, invite the friends and neighbors. It's called the barbecue. <laughs> Happy barbecue party. <laughs> He's wild. Don't laugh, sir, you're gonna get it too. <laughs> Isn't he going to get it? Why do you say no? His whole group is... His wife is out of town, not his old lady's out of town. Why do you think you're talking to some din web up here or something or other? You say his young lady, his wife, his spouse, his love, his mother, anything, but you don't say his old lady's out of town. That's crude. Where is your old lady? She's still out of town. She is. If there is anything that I, Rusty Ward, can do to help you in your hour of need, any little thing, nothing, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> you mean if we do it, it's just going to be a favor to me? Me? It's been a week. It's been a whole week and you haven't had it? You're looking at it, honey. You know what I, I think it is? is I think it, I think you think about like tr like sex education now for for kids. We could actually maybe at some point go into sex education, which we're still having problems with. Oh boy, uh, John Oliver has a really great piece on it. Actually, we could probably actually no. I, I think we should link to that. I, I think that'd be important. Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I haven't I haven't watched it, but it, I've heard it, it. it is really good. Um, but, like, the way I remember it, sex education was treated very dry. They have this whole thing where they make you say, like, penis and, and vagina, a few other words over and over again to get all the giggles out of your system. <laughs> I'm, laughing, I'm laughing kind of at that, and then I'm also remembering how I had kind of an accidental issue in sex education class mm -hmm. where we were being taught, and they, it was the PE teacher who was uh, leading the class, and just one time he put on a video about uh, childbirth, and it was like the most graphic video of childbirth and about probably probably about 30 minutes later than he probably should have in terms of his mindset like they had already given birth to the child they're talking about the placenta part and then he turns it off he's like i think that's enough it's like 
Probably just about towards the it's, end of the movie. Well, you, you, well, you might as well just commit to the whole fucking thing. At really, point. at that point, <laughs> that's where we were at. But he had that. That's when. That's when it was too much. Right. But it's like that's the whole thing. It's like if you embrace it and really talk yeah. about it and let it go, then yeah, we're going to get past this kind of right. juvenile thinking. But. You were saying, but, but anyway, just the idea that they do that at the beginning to get all the giggles out, and then they just, it's not that they're like, this is super serious, but they try to treat it so clinically and so matter of factly. That actually might be important for like, for like younger kids going through like sex education, yeah. just because it removes the stigma. However, sh her audience is primarily adults, primarily adults who like, you know, at most have like backroom jokes about like sex and stuff like that, but you know, wouldn't in like, polite everyday conversation so they might actually have some discomfort at having like a real conversation about sex and and that's why as juvenile as she is like is she saying anything that's like so really off the charts like she has a song about birth control pills the pta yeah pill takers and anonymous not pill takers anonymous but but yeah uh, about that about how like kids know more about sex than adults do on some level which is, is I think we'll go into a little bit more happy. about that subject um, uh, after the break, but 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 the idea being that like th it's sort of the perfect way to deal with kind of like a generation of like sexually repressed adults. Maybe we're not having an understanding about it, but it's just like coming hot off the heels of the fifties. Like it, it's I, I don't even know if I've said this here. You have to remember it. People were not, married couples were not sharing beds in movies. Yeah, the I Love Lucy, prime example. Really? I, I don't remember that. They, they, didn't, they didn't share a bed? Desi were... and uh, Lucy were had two beds, different sides of the room, and a closet that wrapped around behind both of them. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're a married couple. You can show, you can show a married couple on television now but that but that's the thing is it was just like no no but i don't know if anyone in a it, it, okay maybe this is a thing we have to actually research and please let us know did married couples in the like 40s 50s and 60s not share a bed because or is this just something that was in or, 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 this is, like, or if this is just a thing that was like designed by like movies and stuff like oh we can't show a couple sleeping together and by sleeping together i mean literally the place that they would sleep in the same bedroom yeah. I, I mean, it wasn't wasn't it super common for pretty much everyone to sleep in the same room up until like X number of hundred years ago? Mainly really? because there wasn't space oh, for anything otherwise. Right. I'm sorry if, if, if I'm not being as inclusive, but but that's what that's what I mean. Where it's just like, wasn't everybody sleeping in the same room all the time? Were they sleeping on the same beds essentially all the yeah. time? Yeah, you look at cultural stuff. Pause that for a second. Yeah. You look at cultural issues like you see in a lot of places, like in Latin America, like. Families, like generations, live together, and like yeah. people have to share rooms in order for everybody to be in the same. Yeah, space. But, but, it, but it's just like it, it's just like I, I think that so that social stigma is so fascinating because it does seem so invented, and I think that's really what this is kind of combating. It's just kind of like if this is the silly way you're going to avoid sex, we can at least approach sex earnestly. Also, sorry if this is getting really jangly, but you know we can at least approach sex like earnestly, but. By just being like ah, uh, is, 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 but not offensively. Yeah, yeah, not 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 offensively. Um, okay, yeah, <laughs> taking a break. Be right back. A madam president would fulfill our country's need. A madam president could hold up our nation's creed. A madam president built for comfort and for speed. Could probably save the day for the good old USA and be the best president we ever had. Oh, ladies, you say, why should we have a madam president? Oh, why the hell should we have a woman president to begin with? Please, gentlemen, don't be upset. I have nominated myself for a reason. I feel this is the time we need a woman in the White House. After all, I have never seen any problem that a man can raise that a woman couldn't solve laying down. <laughs> don't laugh, honey. We don't need a ladybird in the White House. We need a lady broad. <laughs> Thank you. We have many problems. 
but couldn't a woman solve these problems quietly and don't spend too much money doing it? Who holds on to a dime tighter than a woman? And who knows how to handle a man as far as money is concerned as well as a woman? Come on, Daddy, you know I'm right. We have many problems, many, many problems in this world today, but our biggest problem, of course, is Russia. <laughs> but honey, it's all you need. If I was your president, give me a small room with a bunk bed and that fat Russian, honey, in 20 minutes, I'll have the whole thing won. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm not lying to you, I'm telling you the truth, because after all, he may be a Russian, but believe me, he's a man. And as a man, he will no doubt make an offer for my honor. And I, in turn, being a lady and a president, will honor his offer. <laughs> and from then on, it's honor, offer, honor, offer, honor, offer, till everybody's friends, right? So a vote for Rusty is a vote well placed. And your vote will never go to waste. So when all said and done, maybe someone will say, Hooray for Rusty, and long may she lay to be the best Madam President of the USA. Hi, we're back. Hi. So we did do some research about the bed th about the bed thing. Apparently, there there are a decent amount of Americans who like don't share a bed, but like, but th but that's and like no, I, I definitely I, I mean, it seems like a lot of it was more related to either marital problems or some kind of disorder like raised, restless legs. Yeah, or where something. like they couldn't share. Like like there are plenty of reasons I can think of of why to not share a bed for just like. Like sure, just like sleep reasons and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, a uh, legitimate reason, yeah. right? I, I did. I did know someone whose parents slept in in separate rooms, and I don't know if that was like a marital problems thing because it never seemed like they were marital problems. It just just the, the parents' relationship was kind of weird. Um, but but the, that is a thing, and I've definitely seen it. It's just I've never seen the like twin beds, like. Like over here, yeah, you know, and a like cabinet in between, and it looks like a lot of that does come back to the taboo of trying to not show things that would even yeah. suggest sexuality most, on popular most TV. couples. And maybe you were just speaking for the U.S., but it seems like a good amount of couples uh, tend to sleep in the same bed in the same room. Woo woo woo! Um, but again, I think that ties back to how this is combating popular media of the time of trying to remove sex from the equation of yeah. American life. And with that, we wanted to get into a little bit more detail about the tracks. And the tracks are pretty, they're like, it's just two tracks per side, but it's really more, those are the songs. Right, the, and the rest then, is just kind of like the, the, the ramblings and yeah, and the, the off, off the, well not ramblings, but like bits. Yeah, like little bits or riffing with an audience, you know, definitely asking questions and throwing one-liners in there. Um, this doesn't have the runtime, but it feels awfully short. It's really short. I mean, the the, the combined two sides, because I, I put I put them on the same audio file, it was like, that was like 35 minutes, and that's including like uh, the, the space, you know, before, middle, and, and end. So exactly. it's maybe... I could, it could be... 33, maybe even... Yeah, so maybe like 33 minutes, so like... like Maybe 16, 17 minutes aside. Yeah, like, really, yeah. really short. Um, it was also recorded in a bowling alley here in... Anaheim. Well, not technically here. Here in Orange County, but yeah. Anaheim, not too far from here. Um, Look, to, to people... It, it doesn't matter. Okay, for people, people on the other <laughs> side of the country, that's quite clear. <laughs> I know. No, even to people in L.A., they're kind of like, well, I guess Anaheim's closer. Sorry, it's still Orange County. County. It's still Orange County. That's what comes um, down to. We're not that close to Anaheim. We're close, like, we're like 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Yeah. 20 minutes? We're around there. It depends on the You're traffic. Closer. Yes, I'm yeah. like down the street from Anaheim. Um, I live in LA now. We're, I come all the way down to Orange County to do the show now. Anyway. <laughs> it's all an illusion. This is a set. It's a set. We built this set. It's a nice, expensive set that we have. Exactly. Technically, I almost went into a we set. built this setty joke. Don't. But uh, just exactly, we don't okay. need to reference that song. Okay, uh, <laughs> so we have we have um, 
Ask the Kids and Pill Song, which I think were the ones we were most interested in speaking about. Uh, the Pill Song, while not particularly well written, is is interesting because it is talking about contraception in the 1960s, and that's an issue we're still facing today. It's it's. It's got an interesting styling to it, talking about, you know, how you can hide it, don't get caught with it, you know, if it'll work until it doesn't work, and then, you know, money back guarantee, haha, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but it's, it's, it's really interesting to hear a female perspective on that. Yeah. And again, juvenile nature aside, it is groundbreaking for the time. Yeah. Well, I, it does say the pill song was written by a man, but it's definitely like a, a female. It's written by a, a Bill LeBlanc. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, Pillsong and Madam President are written by Bill LeBlanc. Rusty's Here and Ask the Kids is, is by uh, Rusty Warren. Um, okay, we can switch to Ask the Kids then, because since that yeah. is her own personal track, that one in itself no, is a lot all, more All of these are still, like, female perspective. Ask the Kids is the most interesting, because it's, it's one of those things that, like, um, oh, look, I don't think he's particularly, like, the best comedian on the planet, but, like, I remember Bill Engvall did a joke about, like, sort of, like, you know, you try to talk to your kids about sex, and you end up with, like, a notepad, like, writing everything down. There's a reason why they call it the birds and the bees. Yeah, but but it's it's that whole thing of like, uh, of like I think I I don't know if it's just like I I I don't know maybe it's just younger generation always kind of knows more better or something like that. But it's it, it's a perennial issue. It's it's a perennial issue. It, it always comes up. Like the next generation of kids always seems to kind of like, know a lot about what's going on. That's not to say that, like, adults are obviously adults who've had children know how to have sex, unless they, I don't know, like, magicked themselves into having children, or, like, we're, we're just... I feel like we're going dangerously close to some kind of, like, religious epithet. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but you get what I mean, where it's, it's just kind of like, there, there are definitely people who are, who are so directed towards sex as being, like, a purely, like, procreative activity that they may have never had, like, like that's why you get people, like, who are just like, yeah, I've had sex, some, or, well, then again, they could just be not into sex, and they could be asexual, but you get what I mean, there's a lot of people who, like, weren't necessarily, like, you know, of, of that kind of orientation who just, like, were never introduced to the idea that, like, sex could be, like, joyful or something like that. Recreation over appropriation. Recreation. And I think it's a lot of what this promotes, is that it, it doesn't promote one over the other. It's just as much like, get married, and, you know, have sex, have kids, you know. Though there are some, there are little jokes here and there, especially when we're oh, the audience about course. infidelity and stuff like that. Oh, of, of course, definitely. But that's the thing, is that she's playing, like, all sides of the field. Very true. Yeah. Oh, there's a lady with big boobies, and she has two fellas with her tonight. Goody gumdrop. Are you married to either one of these gentlemen? This one here? He's saying no, and she's saying yes. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Do you want to meet a married sex maniac over this side of the room over here? She said she'd love to meet you, sir. <laughs> She has big boobies just like your wife has, so you feel just at home. <laughs> oh, a lot of people think I have big knockers, you know. <laughs> I want to apologize to my audience tonight because a lot of people, you know, who, who have seen me in person or who, some of them who never have seen me in person all seem to seem to wonder about what Rusty Warren really looks like. And from listening to the albums, they, they, they get a picture of Rusty Warren. They seem to feel that, that Rusty's a real big busted broad, you know, with the big boobies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I want big knockers like that lady has got over there. Oh, you can laugh because maybe it isn't important for you to have big knockers down at the Safeway store and they give you four cans a piece for a dollar or something. You get a little credit, a little blue chip stamp or something. With me, it's important in this business that I should have big knockers. Don't you laugh, sir? It is important for a woman to have big boobies. This is our world today and we do live in it. D do you have a little problem we could discuss, sir? <laughs> She says, yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yeah. Well, you know, um, 
but but anyway, say, say what you're going to ask the kids. Uh, 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 but the yeah. whole issue is that it's it's a it's a perennial concern that the kids are always knowing more. Um, I think the the irony is that you hear a lot about that these days of people like our parents saying like, oh, the kids they're all crazy, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And this came out at a time where they were the kids and they were the ones that they yeah. were talking about. So the idea that people are complaining that there's actually a legitimate issue there is basically pointless because it's every generation, even if it's not every generation, it's cyclical. If the next generation, if one generation is very sexual and then like that causes like a kind of dip in the next one, it's going to keep going back and forth yeah. over and over and over. So there's really nothing to the argument. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting to address that. And she even makes a joke about a nine-year-old and it's like, that's, that's young. And even then, like, when we yeah. hear about people talking about it, I'm like, I don't hear people referring that young. I, I mean, I understand that she was just trying to do it for the sake of, like, of, of like the song and maybe it rhymed better, but it's just like, I don't know. That that was a bit like, mm. that That was a cringeworthy that, moment. That, that was a cringeworthy moment, but... Um, I don't think we're going to pull that one for the... No, for the no, well, no, I, I... Yeah, but... Um, but, yeah, it's... I mean... You know what I, I'm going to say, in, just in regards to Rusty Warren, in comparison to like some of the other stuff we've listened to like this, because it draws both good comparisons to Alan Sherman and to Gurlesque, mm -hmm. um, in that, well, one in the case of it's it's like it's like a dirty fly. Damn something. flies. It's getting um, really hot. It's getting super <laughs> hot. Like, this is like one of the hottest weekends in California. I'm actually kind of happy I'm back in Orange County, because up in the valley where I live now, it's like cooking. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no... I think I just, on some level, Alan Sherman is a more clever, like, song parodyist, you know, but... But it wasn't groundbreaking. But, but, it, but it was one of those things where it's just like, I still just didn't find any of it kind of funny, whereas this is, like, more juvenile, more blunt, and... and it's, but it's more purposeful. But it's, but it's more purposeful. Um, and I think what I like so much here is that Rusty Warren's personality is super infectious. That's why I think... We we both kind of like just the, the the sort of like banter, like interacting with the audience, like sessions a little bit more, because even when they're kind of cringeworthy, it's fun. It's fun, and she's just making everyone feel good or bad in exactly. a fun way. <laughs> and then there's this whole background music thing of a band playing with her, and she almost has like a light motif where it's just like playing the same like jazz riff over and over throughout the the session. It's like. Oh, man. But, you know, it reminds me of that Mitch Hedberg thing where, where uh, what was it, um, uh, it, it wasn't Mitch altogether, it was uh, it was his first, I think, like, full comedy album where the guy's just playing, like, a bass riff the entire time, where, where it's just, like, just something to keep, like, the, the rhythm. Uh, adding going. a pace to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, But, but with, with this, I mean, like, it's so, this is the one most, the moment we think we both cringed at the most, but I just absolutely loved where she was talking about, there's, she's like points to this woman in the audience who's just got, just like, oh, you've got some big boobies and you've got two men with you. <laughs> and she wouldn't let go of it. Would, but she kept going with it. It was so funny when she was just like, you know, everyone thinks I have big boobies. Nah. <laughs> like, I wish I had yeah, big boobies. <laughs> oh my just, gosh. It's just like, I, 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 it's, again, it's so juvenile, but it's the fact that like, it's also so earnest and she's, She's trying to draw that kind of laugh, the kind of laugh you get at a grown woman saying the word boobies over and over again. Yeah, to one of the it's, audience it's who has so boobies. brutally honest about herself. Uh, and, and it's just, it, it, it's, I think that's what I like there, is I like that it's her, it's her personality. The song parodies may not be great, but they're so totally her. Even the ones that she didn't write, like the Pill song and Mad Eye President. She like, performs them well. She she performs them well. She owns that fucking material. Like Madam President, I think is is probably actually uh, of the song that's on here. It's probably the best one. Not necessarily because it's the best song, but because it's got the most interesting source material. It's got the most interesting source material, and it's got the best kind of thing wrapped around it, where she's talking about like how she's going to solve world problems, like like how she's saying like she's going to solve problems with the Russians by basically. Like sleeping with him, and it's just yeah. like, yeah, and it's just like, yeah, <laughs> honor her offer, and he, she will, or he will honor. offer to take her honor. She will honor that offer, and then it will be honor, honor offer, offer, honor, offer, honor, offer. 
Um, and and until everybody's friends or yeah. something like that. And it's like, I see where you're going with this. But, it's but, funny. But, but, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a goofy way to talk about sexual empowerment. And she, I don't think she's actually being like, we're going to fix the world's problems if I sleep with everybody. If, but if that, I become president and sleep with everybody. It's that, it's that idea of just saying, you know what? It doesn't matter. We can just talk about it. Yeah. We, we, we can, you know, uh, it's, it's I mean, almost a, it's a why not. It's 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 a why not, and it's it's definitely an old play on like a or it's it's a play on an older concept of like female sexualities being, but but it's that whole kind of like it's 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 it's, it's not only it reduces the shame in being kind of um, I I you know I, I want to use a word here that's not going to offend people, but but just being kind of loose that the like it's fun, it's not a problem as long as you're not hurting anybody kind of attitude. And then here she's saying, it's like, hey, maybe being loose will fix some problems. Yeah. Maybe we need a woman president. Maybe we need a loose woman president. That woman will be me kind of kind of thing. And and I know maybe maybe loose is not the right word. And, and I'm, you know, well, we can we can tie it. But, and since we're, we're coming to it. But, 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 but the, the, idea, it. the idea being that like it, it passes the stigma. But anyway, yeah, yeah. To, to just kind of bring to a close, it kind of addresses in a positive way, the issue of what we've been facing a little bit right now of slut shaming. Yes. That we're, we're coming down on people who are, you know, extremely Ooh. conservative. And like the, right. the moment we start relaxing, uh, all the people who are against that just start throwing, you know, terms are out there. I, I don't watch The Bachelorette, but I hear about it because I listen to Kevin and Bean in the morning and they do a report on that. And the most recent episode, or the, the season of The Bachelorette, there was a lot of slut shaming, and it's it's this kind of strange thing of like Shame. we're already Shame. putting in a really yeah. strange situation anyway, and you know that this is bound to happen. Like like that, that's the thing is it's this weird like kind of sick pleasure that people take out of out of like putting people in scenarios where it's like it's gonna be there's gonna be sex and people are gonna be hot and stuff like that, and then it's just like ah oh, yeah she's messing around with people she's a slut and it's like. Hold on, that's that's what you want. Don't especially don't shame someone for something you want. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, that, that's that's a that's that's another like really ugly part of it is just like, it, you know, it, it's. I think we're kind of we should end there, we, but we like should, just end there because there's definitely a bigger a bigger topic of conversation. But it's just like, I what basically is presented here is the idea that like. Sex isn't bad. Sex for there, sex for all different kinds of reasons is good. So, uh, so what we're saying is, yeah, relax, people. <laughs> relax. relax, relax. Listen to Rusty Warren. It's goofy as hell, and she talks about boobies. And, It'll make you feel more comfortable. And, and, and joking about like men's size, and it's just like, remember, ladies, on your honeymoon night when he stands out there and he's fully naked. Don't giggle. Don't giggle. <laughs> but alrighty. Yeah. I think I think we've we've done Rusty Warren well. Yeah, I think she would oh, be glad to oh, hear that. Hopefully, um, I'm actually going to see if I can get in touch with her. Apparently, because you can. She actually supposedly answers all of her Facebook messages. So let's have to find her on Facebook. We're we're working on it. All right. See you next time, guys. See you on the flip side. I guess it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching the whole thing. Like, subscribe, comment, click down below the thingy. Exactly. And then click the other thing for the other thingy. And then and then watch our other videos and then watch the next video and watch the last video. So watch our things. We promise they're very similar but very enjoyable. Have a good one. Bye.